Columbia College at its best form, I think, plays a super, super clean macro game. Some teams will have better players individually in certain roles. And I think if we play our macro game that we know how to play, if we execute properly, we'll be able to win everything pretty easy. Pretty confident coming in. Hello and welcome back for game two of the University of Illinois versus Columbia College. And hearing the 80 carries kind of talk about confidence is what you want to see because 80 carries need a bit of swagger, a bit of confidence. You need to be able to step forward and yeah. make the plays. Sometimes you need the confidence uh, from your team building you up and <laughs> being the front liners. But yeah, this absolutely. Is also true. But I liked what he talked about there. Evan RL was talking about the macro game. Sure, you can have better players individually. Sure, you might run into people who are better than you in lane, mm -hmm. but the teamwork and the macro game is what's going to excel and put you above them because you could have just a ragtag group of five people who are really damn good at the game. Team, but having a team is what's going to make you come out on top. Absolutely. I mean, that's what League used to be, right? Before everybody knew anything, like, we're ragtag. Wow, wow, West. Who's better at just the game in general? And that's what brought it. But now you have to fine-tune all of those beautiful things <laughs> as we get into Champion Select. We will see what they have for each other. Now I see a Talia ban Talia. on the side of... And the Morjana. <laughs> Morjana. It's a Mor the Morgana ban, the Graves ban. Draves. Um, what? What are you doing? <laughs> You're confusing people. Uh, yeah, Morgana Graves so far from Illinois. And then Kaisa, as well as Talia from Columbia College. Uh, it's not on broadcast right now. Yeah, but we'll hop back in as I'll the uh, call out as much as I up. can. So it looks like they're still targeting Xeno a little bit, and the Varus goes out. So pretty much mm -hmm. the same bands flopped over here for University of Illinois as they did on red side with a change. Okay, so... Apparently, we're going to remake the lobby. Something happened, and it should be, be a quick thing where they quit out once they're informed that they need to quit through the lobby. Uh, the Aurelia was the last ban for Columbia College, and so the bans so far should are stay true. Illinois banning Morgana, Graves, and Varys, and then Columbia College banning Talia, Kaisa, and Aurelia. So as we keep that up again, the mid lane champion pool starts to go down immediately. And that's from the hands of Columbia College. So Julian's saying, yeah, these may be a few things that I play as well, but I feel comfortable down here. We just had the Cassiopeia. I think it hurts Zeno more. All right, so they're remaking the lobby right now. Like you said, the Talia and the Aurelia, those are the two things that uh, were played by Zeno mm -hmm. that he popped off on. His Talia got banned in game one as well when Columbia was blue side. So Zeno, they're paying a lot of respect to him despite having Julian yeah. in the mid lane. They're saying this is a matchup that actually does matter a whole bunch. We saw it matter in their first game today where Julian, he was kind of getting beaten in the early parts because of the ganks, mm -hmm. but it was the turnaround. It was the management of summoner spells and the way that Columbia College played as a team that put them on top. Everybody's back in the lobby, so hopefully this time it'll launch without a hitch. I wonder if Stumpy uh, playing the really good Shogath last game, I mean, eventually you become just a raid boss as he did, but goes for something like the GP this time, add a little bit more uh, global pressure onto the map, but also again to that gr aggressive champion pool to kind of split push and crush some, crush some people down in the side lanes. But we have seen Columbia College can play both of those situations, whether having Stump Stumpy split push or whether having the team fight composition come through. And Illinois, very big on the objectives last game. It didn't seem like it phased Columbia College too much. Yeah, and Columbia College, even though they lost the Dragons, they were trading them for pressure. They were trading them for uh, the the turrets. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the thing that there was, there was one that they traded for, you know, kills back and forth, and they lost that fight, and then just realized they should not contest and when they are in their power troughs of things like the tiers and whatnot. So I, I waiting think for the scaling. In games like last game were interesting because you can kind of pinpoint the moment uh, middle to like 20 minutes in the game-ish and on where they started fighting around Julian a lot. They started kind of escalating what items he would have so they can kind of branch back from that and say, you know, if we do fail on Julian once, let's not go back because there were three times when they kept going back and he would get out without his flash. And as I was saying before, credit to him, credit for the great engages. But at some point, you got to say, what's our next in? Or do we kind of pressure him out and not try to do it so much that we are losing resources? Yeah, and that's, uh, it's just kind of, I would say, unlucky to see because... Unlucky is a good word. When you're, you're pressuring the mid laner like that, you want to be able to keep the pressure up and have it be unrelenting. But he was able to make it out Crazy. without having to use flash. There were some things like the E wasn't landing on Swain. 
And, and there's a whole bunch that goes in there where if those were tiny differences or gank timings were different, then you're going to have a very different game because it did stem a lot from that mid lane and the it turnaround did. of the Casio. But then Evan RL was the one who kind of got past the ball da, at the da, end da, of the da, game. Da, da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who got to kind of run it into the end zone there. No JR this game. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Almost back in the champion select for this one. Columbia College feeling good here. University of Illinois now on the blue side. They'll get first pick. They'll be able to kind of sort things out. We saw a few of those bands. Rakan was prioritized by Dean last game. I got to give huge credit to Noob the way he played the Braum as well. Absolutely shutting down Dean. He had a tough time playing League of Legends last game. So there's still great play coming here from the University of Illinois. Just got to come together in the mid game so Columbia College cannot take over so quick. Buck Sack been trending towards that Skarner, not being too aggressive in the jungle, but he is making sure he is in the back pocket of any of the lanes that need a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. yeah, make sure it's nice a safe play. Exactly. Uh, right now, we're back in the champion select here. The bands will stay the same. They dun, were dun, dun. Morgana, Graves, Varus, and then Talia, Kaisa, and Relia. And then we will go ahead and start having the picks come through. Like we said before, the Talia and the Aurelia, the two games that Zeno played, the 2-0 that he had over Maryville, were off the back of those two champions. And they're going to actually snap up the Rakan there, take it away. A lot of teams, uh, especially Zeno and squad, enjoy being able to capitalize on instant initiations. They did it with Weaver's Wall all the time. Throw up a wall, even if there was an escape for the other team, they could get in for one or two kills. They like these quick hits. In and out, great pressure for yeah. Illinois. And Rakan gives you so much, and I like that because it's a champion that gives you Zyra Khan combo, mm -hmm. uh, there's Caitlyn you can pair with it. There's a lot that can go with this champion, but a lot of it is when you're ahead, Rakan just makes it so much easier to get the right fights. And you can see Illinois are saying they want engage. They want to force you to fight yep. them. But that early Orn pick, I'm sitting here going, Stumpy, he played Yasuo into this. <laughs> He's okay with playing Fiora. He might just be able to have another pop-off performance here if that is an Orn that goes to the top lane. No, taking up Korean Danny's Kaylin feels good. The 80 carries have gotten exactly what they played last game. That feels very nice, especially in that position. CS in quite fine, and there it is. Strong and strong, and there is the Yasuo locked in for Stumpy on the top side. It got banned second phase with Galio last game, but he gets it. Game two. Yeah, and I saw the deliberation there because you have that <laughs> as your last pick before the bans come through, and you really want to pick Braum against Orn. But Yasuo also has Wind Wall, which will destroy the it's Call true. of the Forge God. So I really like this. So they pick the Yasuo here so it doesn't get banned away. But it also means Illinois still have to throw bands at Braum, Braum and take it off the table. And they also can get top lane out of here. Oh, I'm sorry, mid lane now once more if they want. I have that Braum. What else can be nice and tanky or make someone tanky? Ooh. Ivern and Olaf. Yeah. Shutting down a bit of that aggression from the jungler utility. Yeah, so having the Caitlyn and the Rakan means you have Engage, you have somebody that you can protect like Korean Danny. And Project One, when I got to talk to them, they were talking to about me, or they were talking to me about his What they say about you, Zayn? Uh, <laughs> everybody talks about me. Anyway, the uh, the Ivern is something Oof. that he is really, really good with. And he was saying, like, his teammates were saying he has like a 100% win rate in solo queue on Ivern. It's just like, this guy's Oof. Ivern is crazy. And that's so, when you look and he's played two games. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. See, that, it, it is good, though. We saw it the other day, and it was it was quite scary. Yeah, and when you're protecting something like a Caitlyn, it just makes it more frustrating. The shield oh, plus it blows up and slows, so making it so it's very hard to actually reach that Caitlyn. But now they're drafting some engaged tools of their own to reach Caitlyn with, like the Alistar for Dean, which is pretty good into the Rakan as well. It's okay. It's not awesome, but it's pretty good. It's all right. I mean, last fight he was going in and staying in. This time he can do it even better with the cow. Throw down that will. Do we have Vladimir to the sidelines? We saw some bans coming in the first days of the college championship towards Vladimir. He's going to get locked in. Also saw some of that Nunu play. And does it go into the hands of uh, Project One? I think Nunu actually would be the pick here. Get that AP. For him. Up against the Trundle. It's okay. You can go ahead and go into the jungle, but also... You have two really oh. good targets to buff up. He loves Skarner. He's going to swap into the Skarner there. Instead of going supportive, he's going to go for something that can at least contest and go for some pulls and put pressure. This means that mm. I like this because if Stumpy goes in, yes. you pull the Yasuo, and then it becomes the their team Yasuo versus <laughs> my team's Yasuo. 
becomes the 0-7 version. I saw as soon as you came up with it, it clicked in my head as well. Be a great initiation and a stop. See, University of Illinois have had that in their favor, shutting down Dean, shutting down the initiations, but they weren't able to shut down all of the pressure, ultimately, coming in from Columbia College, who are now on the red side of the map, playing basically the same composition with a different top and a different bottom. So the core in the middle, quite much the same. Yes. Get that Orn back in, and a, quite a switch up here for Illinois. Yeah, they have the same damage dealers for them. The bot lane. Uh, same uh, mid lane carry and same with the uh, the bot lane carry, yeah. but now they have split push potential. They have a way to go through team fights because they have engage from Alistar, and then they also have the tank shredding of Trundle, which makes front to back team fights fantastic. Yes. But now I'm looking at the lanes, and I'm saying, Yasuo, Stumpy got to counter pick top of Potamus, who's one of those champions that he loves to pl perform on and have pretty much pop off performances. The Cassiopeia, Julian got to play the same champion that they had a hard time dealing with when they got to counter pick it. Now it's the counter pick themselves, and they're saying, okay, yeah. well, let's let's pick Vladimir. And the Cassio is really good into Vladimir. Well, we'll have to see what happens. A game at two about to happen here for the semifinals of Collegiate Championship of 2018. Columbia College versus Illinois about to head onto the rift, and Illinois looks to keep themselves going strong here. They need to get one. Last game was pretty tough for them, but they came out strong in the mid game. Couldn't capitalize on any errors that Columbia College was making. Columbia College looks to come into game two with a lot of momentum. Columbia College, now I think this composition suits them a little bit better. Uh, Dean on something that can engage, and then they also have Stumpy on this split pusher. So if they get a lead, I want to watch Stumpy. He's always the guy that I love watching in these games because he's just absolutely incredible on the Fiora. The, and I was talking to him, I said, you played incredibly well two days ago. And he was yep. like, I actually usually perform better on stage. And I, was, I actually went, what? Yeah, right? What are you talking about? It's like, that was near, it was like 21 and a half minute game. It's like, oh, he took a, I bet it's because he took a turret shot that one level one against oh. the board. I think that's literally it. That's the thing that like haunts a player where you're like, I shouldn't have done that. That could have lost me in the entire lane phase, the entire game. Yeah. So definitely somebody who's hard on himself, but very aggressive player willing to try and take those risks and make those mistakes, which then mean that you're gonna improve from it, that you're gonna learn from it. That's why I like watching Stumpy there. Oh, gold. Gold, but- Did he just share it? No, he oh, only went on to Trundle. Word. He didn't step on it fully as- Rude. Well. Um, something I do wanna bring up though is uh, Summoner Spellbook got changed. So now it's the swap it out temporarily. And so Vladimir's have swapped to Predator as their primary keystone. And the reason for this is you don't run Ghost anymore because you would have run like Ghost plus uh, we would have run like TP Flash and then swapped right. it for Ghost because that's your biggest weakness is getting into the team fight and flanking as Vladimir. And so it allows your late game to work. So now you get to take the Ignite for the lane pressure and then the Predator is so that you can have kind of a, a pseudo Ghost to enter the team fight yeah. later in the game. And it's also quite powerful because it has extra burst damage on top of it to start fights off. You get that first blast. Mm -hmm. So it's more damage than it was before. And you get to have it, I think it's on a lower cooldown as well, than the Ghost. So more access to it. It's funny how like when things change, you go, oh, this was actually good all along. It was just the fact that they really wanted to have Teleport too. Ooh, nice in. Good Guardian there as Noob doesn't take too much more damage and double Predator as well for Project 1 and Xeno. So if they do want to target, Julian might have a hard time getting away from that first hit. Mm -hmm. Julian. Back to lane as he gets himself a ward towards the bot side. Quick pause here as the players get situated. And it seems like Julian is fiddling with his mouse. We'll get that suited up here so he can get back into game. I'm sorry. Yes, Julian. Yes, it was, it was like the map is switched, but the side is switched. So I was like, oh no, did I say the wrong one? Yeah, the nope. map switches, Blue jerseys. but we don't force the players yeah, to yeah. sit on the opposite <laughs> side of the stage. So it's like every time, just uh, musical chairs between games, best of five. You don't Reset know. Reset up everything. Ah, then you'd like sit in somebody else's warmth at that. I'm mm. it's, it's uncomfortable, uncomfortable. I didn't know we were going to there. I was just saying. You know, I was just thought about like musical chairs and that you know, one time you sit down. Ooh. Anyway, yeah, Columbia College, Julian. I, it's weird because before esports, I didn't really notice uh, how many mouse issues there could possibly be in the world. <laughs> it just blows my mind because I don't think I could have had like mouse issues ever with like multiple mice unless 
it's just like it's dead. But we're, we dead. we also might have those moments and just fluff them off because you're like, well, I'm dead. I'm waiting for my friends, you know, in the next whatever to play, mm-hmm. or I'm cooling down. And you're at home. You're not going to be like, oh, my mouse is fine. You know, you, the next time you touch it, you're not going to sit there and be like, oh man, I need to call QC right now, <laughs> guys. We can't play. So I think like it happens more than we think. It's just not something we actually consider because it it keeps working. But right now you're like. If that happens again, that's really detrimental. So I saying, need to make sure that it, nothing is wrong. So you're saying that we all have mice issues. It's just ours are really small in comparison to... I'm not even small. The, it's the way it's like... And how relative is it to you that relative. you know, you're just going to spawn to the next game? My, right? Boom. Mice it's issues not that are relative. Thing. If I'm a pro player, a small exactly. mice issue for me exactly. is, is huge for them because it matters, precision, etc. Sometimes you need a big mm. cheese to fix it. Sometimes you don't need a cheese at all. <laughs> Looks like we're getting uh, almost sorted here with Julian's mouse. As the players are going to be letting each other know they are ready to get into game. Not too much happening at the beginning of this one. Good aggression, though, from Dean. Still playing as he did with his first pick, Rakan, last time, which is now in the hands of Noob. But they instantly got that level two as you get the relic hits in, and he was able to aggress. The health has pretty much been evened up in that bot lane, along with the CS. So not too much pressure there as uh, it should be a cleanup for Korean Danny here. Actually, Korean Danny has fallen behind his CS. I correct yeah. myself. He's fallen behind, but he still has a little bit of a wave. To exactly. Pick up. Uh, and it's also the Alistar. Uh, having the Relic Shield really does help you mm -hmm. push the wave, get level two first, and then get zoned off with the Reaper too. Right? The Relic Shield means a lot. And there's the minion dematerializer as well for Dean. He just took out the cannon minion, which means they'll continue this pressure. Look at Skarner topside, though. Project One, he's going for a gank onto Stumpy, who wants to be aggressive. So he's trying to shut down this Yasuo. Oh, if he just used his Q as well. He's going to have to get those Tempest back up. And the Flash, Look actually. how fast that was. And he even sacrificed the Cannon Minion to do so. Stumpy was taking no risks on that. Dragon for Columbia College, being on the right side. Good pressure in. It's because they saw the Skarner on the Skarner top side. top side makes it even easier. Think, go ahead, get the Scuttle Crab, get the Drake. That's an Infernal, too. That's going to help him out a lot. Ooh. Stumpy's missing a few of his attacks here. Definitely taking a good amount of minion damage, thinking he can trade, but he'll be fine. Knows the fight wasn't going to be anything he could take. Yeah. But now he has to play with deeper wards. And you can see he even placed yeah. the most recent ward just a little bit further down in the river because the regular wards aren't going to see that. And there's the TP in Project 1, once again returning to the scene of the crime on the top side. No way. No flash. And I want to see how much Top of kind of just plays this one out, right? He hits him in the wall. Stumpy feels good. He does have his Q. So as long as he doesn't get stunned up too oh. much. Oh, did he miss him? Oh, no, he got the stun in, but he's going to be good there. Stumpy should be able to get around the minions and kind of slalom himself to safety here. Beautifully done as he gets himself out. Project 1 is all playing that as best as he could. Yeah, that was really well done. And Project One, he's still hanging around here. <laughs> he has no flash. He blew his flash. Bucksack's now coming to the top. I actually think that you win this oh. two on two as Columbia College. And he's gonna walk up top. Potamus has flash still. And this might be just the return. Does he hold the pillar? He still has flash. When does he use it? Wow. He's gonna hold it and what a kill. The false sense of security. Having your jungler there as soon as the jungler leaves, that's when they attack. That has to feel awful as top of Potamus. You have your flash, you have your TP, your jungler just ganked twice. You didn't get a kill on the guy who blew flash to get out. Turned around. And then it's turned around on the retreat here. The knock up so he can't continue walking backwards, even if he knew what was coming his way. And yeah, he's just dead to rights there. And that kill goes over to Stumpy. Exactly. You can see Buckzack saying, I do not want that kill. Get it away from <laughs> me. Get it onto that Yasuo. Oh, and that is why they banned it in game one. Yeah, and you saw the, the slipperiness of it there. He could disengage a 2v1 and just re-engage it, play it safe, and not alert Topopotamus that Buckzack was coming. Yeah, and the way that Stumpy played it afterwards is he baited the teleport out of Topopotamus because he made it so that the minion wave was frozen and had multiple minions right. in it from the previous wave. And so it forced Topopotamus to TP, which means Stumpy will actually have TP before him. And that could be a difference here we see if Stumpy in the future is able to actually do anything about that or exploit that. But that's a window that you can use as a top laner. 
like right now, he has a wave that's going to push. He can't help it. There's just too many casters in this wave. And what a different game this is going to pose, most likely. We saw a lot of action, not already, but on Julian and Zeno in the mid lane. I think we'll see a bit different action this game, along with the split push coming in from Stumpy, obviously, instead of team fighting. But a much different game ahead of us here. Stumpy making sure things are safe. He wants to keep this pressure on. He gets his ward in, and he'll keep going to work. Yeah, you gotta have appropriate warding. That's one of the things that people kind of forget about with aggressive laners, is it's really good and pretty much necessary to actually ward appropriately. You need to ward deep enough that you see the gank coming ahead of time and that you control things like the yeah. scuttle crab and the jungler. Because if you're not controlling the jungler, pressing up is gonna do nothing for you because you're just going to be an easy gank target. And that's why they're controlling the river now. Ward in the middle of the river there for Columbia College and also one on the top side. So they'll see the Skarner coming up. When you don't have those wards, those are the kind of the times you have to play defensive as the top laner or call your jungler to come ward for you. Yeah. It's definitely a requirement though. Something that uh, I remember watching King's Own slash Long Zhu from four do alongside Khan. Make sure he always had the vision. Give him the resources, right? It's not just... It's not just the jungle ganks, it's the vision as well, giving the resources to make sure they're safe. And I actually just got a nice little bit of information on Project One. That roam down from Stumpy saw Scuttle was up, Bucksack was taking bottom Scuttle, so they're like, within the next 10 seconds, he's going to be here. We have an idea of right where Project One is. All this information they're able to use on the side of Columbia College. As right. Noob is saying, yeah, they're, they might be invading a bit, we'll keep that vision in. He has his flash from wow. last engage. Last breath comes down. Top of Potamus blocked out by the wind wall. Yep, got the wind wall there. The Stumpy also got the flash out of Top of Potamus because he didn't even have his full stack Q. It was the pillar knock up into the R, into the last breath there from Stumpy. So, but fingers. Another good combo. Not many people think of that displacement as being an offer. Mm -hmm. You see it, it's like, oh, trigger that? Yeah. Yes, I will, thank you. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> smash the R button real fast. Yep. Too. You gotta be on top of it. It has to be something that's pre-communicated, right? I'm gonna walk up the floor, sure. and then you go for it. So. And it's great for them, getting Trundle as well at this period of time in 8.9. Mm -hmm. They're doing very nice for themselves. Yeah. First pick for them on their side. They got Braum and Trundle. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they, uh... or sorry, other side. It was uh, Trundle Ezreal, Columbia College. That was a previous one. Previous game, looked at the wrong champions up for a second. But yes, this one, they did get the trundle in the first pick alongside that Ezreal. Wanted to secure it. It's a very, very strong jungler. Beats most junglers except, I think, Graves. Uh, Nidalee also, but like mostly Graves. Mm -hmm. That one that beats him, but it's banned away. Saw the bot lane just a moment ago. Korean Danny, Evan RL, 80 to 80, a lot different in that one. We saw quite a bit of pressure going back and forth as I say Ooh. that. Here, come Noob. Project, here comes Project One. Noob has ultimate and he has flash. Oh, how much CC? You would not be able to get out of this one. A death trap for sure. And it looks like they don't want it just yet. I'm playing a little passive here to say if you want to come up, everything's safe, we promise. Bucksack being seen here. Good ward, knowing the top Topopotamus is with that flash down, going to get a lot of attention now. He tries to clear what he can from the wave, so he has a little bit of time. It yeah. looks like he's going to exit out. There's five seconds on Bucksack's ultimate, so they're pressuring on this side of the map. Even though it's Cloud Drake coming up, they're going to go ahead and get turret damage instead, and Stumpy will go for proxying a wave here, or at least catch the wave, making sure that Topopotamus is attention really far back. Oh, wow. Noob was helping out mid. He got tagged. Good battle dance to Grand. This Predator? He used Predator. Himself to safety. Both did. Looks like they're trying to get themselves into range. Not going to be much slow here unless he can get a pool under and keep himself there. Oh, the pole does come in. They're looking to take down Stumpy. Gets himself to a semi safe spot, but no, he needs to stay in the fight and do as much damage as he can. A nice close in by Illinois after they got real pressure on the top side. Yep, that flash from Stumpy right there. Followed by Project One. Project One actually got it very early on him. Good Maybe. thing he has that teleport back up. Yes. True, true, true. Project One on to Rift Herald. Won't need any assistance. And Illinois starting off very much like they would, ha or very much how they would like. Yeah, Illinois, they want to shut down the Yasuo and make sure that Stumpy isn't taking over the game. But Julian, and you can see, once they pressure topside, they're going to give you some wiggle room on the bottom side, and they're immediately going to use that. Burn! <laughs> <laughs> both, both Zeno and Project One very fast here. And Zeno, autos, goes in, gets the pull there. And yeah, Stumpy, pretty much dead there. 
Can't do anything about that. That's why they love the Skarner. Every time. Bucksack tries to get it. Project One, a fan of it. Get those initiations and those for sure kills. Now Project One has the Rift Herald. As we see Stumpy once again back in the face of Topopotamus and about a 55% health turret. Great damage coming in as Stumpy can get those cooldowns rolling now at level eight, almost having a level five ability once he hits them. Junglers back to 59-59 on Raptor Camps. Project One towards the top side. I think he's almost got to spend a lot of time up here. His Raptors have been up for a bit, but he's saying, just want to make sure I can be up here if Buckzack continues to show himself. Look at that. Look at that Skarner cooldown on the Whoop. ultimate. Two, one, ready to gank. He's ready once again. Remember, Yasuo, it's hard to actually get out. Oh, no, man, he has too many. Oh, he gets him. This should be enough damage. Stumpy gets himself back to lane. Turn. Last breath comes out. A few more attacks. The last hits are left the top of Potamus, and a teleport just being used. His flash was down from the last fight. He is getting pressure. Rift Herald top side for Illinois. Yeah, on the bottom side, though, Columbia College will get that Cloud Drake, but this is great from Ooh. Project One. First gank didn't work. Second gank didn't work. Got turned around. Lost his top laner, but now the Yasuo is one and two. And we talked about it as soon as the Skarner was locked in. It's like, this is going to make that Yasuo have an awful time. Yep. The point and click CC, the pullback, the Yasuo cannot go in until that is down. And that's just when you reach the mid game. The early game with these ganks is actually doing quite a bit here. So we'll see if this is the uh, your team Yasuo. Yeah. Or if it's the enemy team Yasuo. Absolutely incredible. Phantom Dancer's built for him now. We saw that even with pressure, Last time Stumpy was able to basically make the maneuvers he needed to, get the kills for his team, and while taking a lot of pressure, obviously relieve the rest of his map, or the, the map for his team, they were able to do big things. Not this time. Now we have to see if Stumpy can recoup. Top of Potamus was, however, in each one of his games, absorbing pressure very well. This game, once again, heads to the mid lane. Oh, no! <laughs> The sun was in his eyes. I mean, he used it when it was when he was on the other side of the yeah. wall. He's, he's like to walk he's like all I shoulder it back in. Yeah. <laughs> like because of the, his point of origination is now through the raptor pit, he either stands there and doesn't get any closer to the fight to hit it again, or he has to like get to the other side of that horseshoe shaped wall. Hold on though. Bucks out now Bucks. into ultimate. Dean gets the ulti on as well. Bucksack, he's getting so slipped up in the oh, minions. He can't get himself to safety. The quickness keeps them alive as Bucksack does not Cassio. get it. Julian about to get the scream out. Twin Fang to Noob. Flash forward. Oh, gets him with the petrified gaze. And they lock in Project One. He knows he had to go a little too deep for that, and it may have sealed the deal on his fate as well. Julian with a good amount of health. Great stop from top of Potamus. Julian gets the heal. He plays a very dangerous game and keeps himself alive. That's insane. Julian gets two kills off the back of that, and then an assist three actually to boot there. And they get the turret, they're back in it. Insane from Columbia College. Snap judgment to keep the game going down towards the bot lane after so much action has been top the past few minutes. That's all we've been looking at. And things really turn up for them. Four to two at 14 minutes in and a 2,000 gold lead. Let's see it again. Oh man, this starts with Korean Danny being engaged on here with Noob off on the side. Korean Danny walks up, but he's the Good one dodge. who gets hit. Noob dodges it, yeah. but Dean actually gets on to Korean Danny, gets the stun, and then they try to turn it around with the charm. But then Julian just faster on the rotation. He got the blast cone, so the bladder has to walk all the way around. Gets enough time, the root. Yeah, the grounded meant that he couldn't oh. flash immediately, and then the flash from Julian to follow with the petrifying gaze. The finish there, then this is just the incredible part. Watch how everybody just kind of gets in here to assist. Dean with the headbutt pulverized, and even Evan RL HP. gets in there. That's so low. Incredible, as well as Julian making sure he marked those first few shots on Noob, helped him get a bit of a phase rush Wait, around mid. the, uh, oh, the cupcake. Fight in the mid lane, Dean. They say you can 1-3-1, one, one. Yeah. we're gonna engage on your primary team. And there's split pushers, the Cassiopeia and the Oswald off in the side lanes, but now they're going to have to be forced to come towards that middle part of the map. Yasuo, it looks like Stumpy is going to continue to push, but yeah, I like that. The, the Recon really does punish split push compositions because you engage on the non-split push. Absolutely. 
Stumpy, whoa. That's not a good thing to see. I mean, obviously, he's <laughs> mid lane. He has a lot of mitigation going in for that magic resistance for Julian. But holy moly, Stumpy is ahead of the game right now and pays pickaxe for him. He's going to stay in the bot lane and pressure up onto Zeno now as he has to be there. This is what happened last game, Stumpy was, or last time, I should say, Stumpy was able to get Yasuo. Three members chasing him now. What does this give the rest of his team? A lot of time to do things. And he's not even going down Wait, right no. away. Oh. He's gonna be able to get the last breath down. Zeno looks like his closest target, but he gets that blood rush in. He is able to get the nice Crimson heal. Yeah, but that's, that's where you go worth. Because three people had to deal with him. That's damage on the mid lane turret. Now you get to rotate so to the top side. They may get this horn in transition. Ah, get back there. <laughs> and they might get the turret. That's completely worth it from a macro perspective. Stumpy gives his life for superior positioning because they send too many people to deal with him. And he still has teleport up so he can head back to his point of origin, or I should say point of death, and do it all over again. Get to the team if he needs help, if they even need help, or even want to attempt Baron. Remember, we're only six, 17 minutes in. It hasn't even spawned yet. And it was University of Illinois to get Shelly. They haven't been able to capitalize off too much of that. Yeah, they sent it to the top side. They got that turret down, but Columbia College just started putting Stumpy in the side lane that had that tier one still up. So they put him on the bottom side. Right now, a minute on the Infernal Drake. So he's going to want to shove out, go to the opposite side of the map, and then reverse the map one more time so that they can go ahead and set up for this Drake. Unless he really just wants to walk straight there after yeah. clearing one or two waves. Why not? Oh, they're going to hook up a little bit here. They see 30 seconds on to Drake. Watch out. Project One definitely wanting to fight. They said, we want vision. We want everything. And Stumpy is the target that they want. I feel like that would have been a flash stinger if uh, they had the chance. So it's awkward when you smite the Scuttle Crab when Dragon's up in 20 seconds and your smite has... Oh, that was, your, that was your smite in the second one. 60 seconds left on your own smite. So you hope they don't know that, but... <laughs> If they start the Drake now, Project One has no way to steal it, but it's a fight. Whoa, last breath right on to him. The quickness will not be used. Project One now has Stumpy on him. Shots going over to top of Potamus. Columbia College has just completely closed down on this fight, and it looks like there may be no chance for Illinois to retaliate. A little too far into the turret goes Stumpy. Zeno finds himself in the flank, but I don't know how much he's going to be able to take for this one. He could be going down. Nice proto belt out, gets one last heal. Twin Fang comes in as the team tries to skirt in there and maybe get a bit of attention from Columbia College, but their attention is in the right spot. Priority now to Dragon, an Infernal, a Cloud, and another Infernal. Yeah, double Infernal is huge for them. Julian now with a QSS hat, pretty much the luxury of going this item, and he's in a fantastic spot. Also, Evan RL silently doing what he does best on this Ezreal, getting to those item spikes. And sure, Stumpy dies again, one, four, and one. But his deaths have actually been really good for the team. And Topopotamus. Forge God is down. Topopotamus really just a body kind of floating around here, trying to get someone to stop, and he cannot find them. They all are able to skirt around the engage. Get that's, to safety. That's just frustrating. Right it is there. frustrating. Topopotamus is trying to get something mm -hmm. to happen in this game with the Orn. His ultimates have been stopped. He got stunned on the last one, and then that TP. Can't really accomplish anything against both the Alistar and the Ezreal who uses the Flash to get out. It's It's got to be the snap judgment too because that TP is not going to be matching a Yasuo who will absolutely crush once he enters that fight. And you can't be with him in the bot lane right now because he will just go through you as well. So as you said, it's that kind of pull your hair out moment. It gets frustrating to try and sort this out for Illinois. Yeah, and now like you said, Top Potamus is going to have to go up against Stumpy. And Stumpy is a level up right now. I'm actually going to check pretty much exactly where the yeah. experience difference is. It looks like it is pretty much a full level there for Stumpy. Topopotamus, I think he'll hit 12 off this wave because it's so large. But now we're still looking at advantage for the Yasuo in this foot push, especially with the yep. double uh, double infernals behind him as well. Oh, and the QSS makes sure that he doesn't get pulled in. So oh. could be greedy and go for you know parts of the Infinity Edge, but besides QSS is more important. He's gotten yanked into those team fights multiple times by the Project One. Definitely helped. They've been able to drop some turrets around the map. Also has pretty good CS with the pressure he was getting in the top side. Still waiting for those engages. You see the super fast turbo Vlad. Shirelia's Reverie along, along with that Predator. Super fast Skarner as well with the Predator being able to Chrysalis. They have the ability to make these fights happen. But we saw the last one. Columbia College able to make it happen on their own terms. 
The retaliation isn't the best, but the initiation is a lot better for University of Illinois. They make it happen on their own terms, and they do find a target. Buckzak goes down first. Do they get stumpy? There's the cleanse coming out from the Quicksilver Sash, and that may be enough for him to deliver the DPS he needs to in this fight. Last breath just tagging onto Project One. He goes down as the Aaron. rest of University of Illinois run for the hills. One seemed to be too much. And right now, they'll push up the mid lane because they don't actually have their jungler. This is the safest course of action here, but this will break the game wide open. Normally, you go Baron, but right now they're going in hit. There's 15 oh. seconds on top of Potamus, 20 on Project One. That's the thing. I say University of Illinois can initiate, but Columbia College can initiate and retaliate with this composition, and they did just that. 22 minutes in, keeping that average game time quite low, at least to be in the base. They haven't finished just yet. There is still a lot of time for University of Illinois to find a way through this offense from Columbia College. And that was so well played here. They use the, the ultimate from the Orn. Which does become a tell, right? It's kind of like they are setting up, what can we do? Yep, they use a lot there. You get Bugsack, then they're not killing the turret. The turret doesn't go down, and the TP comes through for Stumpy, who's now on top of three and Danny. And Danny has to kite away as Julian's trying to reach him as well. But Okay, overextended, they lost their Orn in that fight as well. And then Julian gets another kill, and he's just running rampant. He is 7-0 and 2 in this game on this Cassiopeia. That's ridiculous. Haunting oh, guys. Boom. It was on yeah. sale. I just bought a full guys. <laughs> yeah, he has only missed out on one kill in this game. Just a single kill. Absolutely crazy. Stumpy chasing top of Potamus. Looks like the rest of the team will fall down through mid. Now it becomes the yo-yo offense and defense. Keep Stumpy safe by drawing pressure mid or toward Baron, and he can come fight when he wants to. Looks like that wave is clear with teleports down, though. He'll actually start to approach the middle of the map a little bit sooner. And now, a Baron bait slash Baron dance now begins. Columbia College with that 7,000 gold lead and the inhibitor down. They get to have the, the waves kind of do a lot of work for them. Ooh. Then they can always engage. They have Dean's Alistar. They have some pretty good combos inside of their composition here. Somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna return down to the bottom side. Pick up the CS. He doesn't have TP though. This may be another Baron into Ooh. split push. Remember, Columbia College did this to win both their games back on Thursday, where Stumpy was farming the jungle, picking up the side lane as much as possible. And then when his team baited Baron, it put them in a catch-22 situation where they couldn't answer the Yasuo. But you also couldn't start the Baron or try to get to it. Right. Honestly, if it happens and Stumpy's in the base, if Evan RL teleports into the base, it will be the third time they have used the exact way to beat a team with them teleporting into the base and that Stumpy Yasuo split push. They kind of just somehow find a way to open that window at the end of the game and get a team in the same position. Yeah, and if you send multiple people to deal with the Oswell, then you're in a position where... Exactly. You, you now have to blow a teleport, and you also have to have people run up there. But now they've started it. I think they do this... Oh, not too quickly. They actually pull off of it because the teleport from top of Potamus was just blown. Now there's no way the Orn actually joins. So the Orn is going to have to leave the bottom lane. They're playing the cat and mouse game and saying, we know that you can no longer answer... Yep a potential Baron. Orn is going to have to be in atten attendance. Orn has to be up top. He's not going to shove Yasuo off the wave. You are putting Illinois in a situation where they have to pull the trigger, and they have to get the perfect engage, or else Yasuo is going to take the base, or you're going to be in a position where you're going to lose the Baron. We almost saw it right there in the mid, and we almost actually saw it a few seconds ago. Uh, so Project 1, Predator was used with Shirelia's Reverie. That's back up. But off of that cooldown as well, Xeno recently used his Predator. So waiting for those to come back up. We saw in mid as they went for a snap judgment. Hold off. They have to choose the right one. Now you're going to see the backs here. Completions, I would assume, for Stumpy on the Infinity Edge soon after they get that Drake for themselves. Yeah, they're very, very close. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Top of Potamus on the bottom side. They see him. Oh. They're going <laughs> to jump on him. Wouldn't that feel so wait, bad wait. if you went down building? They see him. They see him. He's going to stay. Oh, he knows right here. That's the first good dodge. The flash is out. Good randomness. All right. Yeah, very, very good. Keeps himself safe. I actually thought he was dead to rights on that one. And flash doesn't help, but he can still be there for his team to alt. And that's what counts at this point. Yeah, he got the E off right in time before he got grounded. And the randomness right on the edge there, so something couldn't catch up. 
Somebody's gonna back, get his Infinity Edge. Exactly what he needs now, because now he's at that 100% crit. Where he wasn't before. Now it's back to this game where Stumpy now has Teleport, Topopotamus doesn't. And so you hold all the cards as Columbia College, and this is where it comes down to the execution and the macro play that they've talked about multiple times as one of their fortes. About a 1,200 gold in the hands of Julian has that to spend towards the Andrews at this point, but the team needs them on the map, and I don't really think he needs too much more damage. He's been positioning well to keep that happening. 10 to 6. 26 minutes in and a 7,000 gold lead here for Columbia College. Just four minutes ago, they were breaking down that middle inhibitor, so it will be up soon. And we'll see what they can continue to do here on the top side of the map. It looks like Stumpy will join them for a bit here as he rotates in and out to draw pressure. Yeah, because Orn on the bottom side of the map has to deal with minion waves, no teleport to his name. Yeah, this is exactly where they're starting. They're starting Baron right now. You're shoving mid-wave with Stumpy, and he's rotating. Orn can't be here. This is a four-on-five. You get the Baron, or you get a fight. Project One, he's like, no, 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 not this way. <laughs> not like this. Gets himself away from a pillar. No tag there. Stumpy actually didn't want one last breath member either. It seems like he wanted more. Or it wasn't in range, I should say. Yeah, they actually he probably would have took it. That's actually really good for Illinois. Normally that situation Ooh. will tax you Ooh. to the point where you have to give up something, but they don't they don't force that. Good pressure, that's a fight right there. They will absolutely go off of that. Zeno being at about 10% HP at this point. One Fang goes in, he's gonna get a Crimson Rush heal back Julian. in. Julian Lowe gets himself healed up with the Seraph's Embrace and the Quick Silver Sash, but does Whoa. he stay alive? They're turning the damage back around. That's the double kill, Stumpy. a possible triple coming in, Whoa. but Stumpy's gonna pick up two more, and the third one comes through for Evan RL. That was an insane fight, a clean ace for Columbia saying, they are gonna take this fight. They're gonna take the Baron and they're gonna get that inhibitor on top of it. That was clean. Absolutely ridiculous. And it was all after a one, two. Someone backed off a bit more, a few little, uh, a bit more health off of someone. And they finally found about half of Zeno's health and said, that's what we needed. Oh my goodness. That, that was a fantastic fight. You're looking at the composition from Columbia College going, they know exactly what they need to do. He should not be poking like that as well. Yeah, but you talked about the last breath, not wanting to use it on a single person. You're right. Winwall there gets rid of the Orn ultimate. Julian gets this turned around on him because he went for it. But watch Dean. Dean goes in, gets charmed. Now he gets to help pulverize three people. Last breath off that. Now you have the Yasuo ignoring armor. Goes in, gets the Q, the E off of that, and then he just gets both of them. That is a skewer if I've ever seen one. Made him a kebab. <laughs> you feel it. You see that coming in. You know he was slamming that ultimate button. Quickly escalating to 15 to 6 on that scoreboard. Evan Rao putting out quite a bit of damage here along with Stumpy, but if they can shut down Zeno like they did, that fight, he died first and was still able to put out that much. If he lives, it could be slightly different, but Columbia College is just choosing all the right calls right now. Yeah, even the calls on the items, the QSS for Stumpy, QSS there as well for Julian, making sure that, you know, they don't get pulled in and absolutely obliterated, but now they have themselves. Baron, this is where they've been the strongest, is after split push situation, having that Baron and pulling the enemy team apart. And you can see three people top, two people bottom. And Dean, I gotta say, he, he deserves a lot of credit for that last fight, where he got that three-man pulverize after the headbutt, when he got charmed. Turn it all around and set it up. That Alistar, 100% part of the composition to yep. set up the Yasuo. Bot lane has been involved in a, quite a lot, actually. Yeah. 12 for Evan RL. I'm sorry, 11 for Evan RL, 1 0 10. And his support participating but, in just a little bit more, even. Just watch, watch the mini map. It's like three people top, two people bottom. Look at the whole squad of Illinois. They just go, we need five people top to clear this. You're losing bottom. And then if they go bottom, they're going to lose this. It just you can keeps see, going back and forth. Look at, look, at, look at the mini map. You can see top of bottom is kind of shaking his head. You know, it's we have to sort out something. And the thing is, is sometimes in these games, you have time to say, what are they doing so well? How do we mitigate it? How can we stop it? But with Columbia College having such fast average game time, you're kind of just saying, we need to throw this at it and hope it works. <laughs> Everything in the kitchen sink. And right there, Stumpy, <laughs> he TPs just so he has higher oh. time. 
All right, so they are going to be able to get Buckzak on this one. How big does he get with Subjugate? He does turn around and get that off. Zeno in the in back. goes Zeno. Will he be able to throw down the ultimate for enough damage? Whoa. Amplification, last breath to the back line. Double kill coming in. Triple, Triple for Stumpy. Looking for the Quadra. That one's going over to Julian. They'll finish off top of Potamus. Dean picks one up for himself at 2 0 15 on the cow. Having a great day. And Columbia College look to take University of Illinois to game point in this semifinal matchup. Starting off with the 2 0, one more to go. That puts him at triple match point. The only thing that will stop Columbia College from making the finals is a reverse sweep. Illinois, they came in, they took down Maryville in a 2 0 in the first day. That was a miracle in and of itself. They're going to need another one here to turn this series around because Columbia looked clean. We were talking about how Illinois did that uh, versus Maryville, and it was, we said, in the middle of the game. They were able to find a few fights, mostly towards the mid lane, able to capitalize there and get a bit of a powerhouse over Zeno to try and make something happen for themselves. I'm sorry, over, uh, yeah, I was right, Julian. over yeah. Zeno, or Julian. But it, it's so strange because even if you get that, you have to deal with Stumpy's Yasuo in the split push. It, and you it have hurts. to deal with Evan it RL, hurts. who is dealing a lot of damage in these games. Evan RL, so basically, I'll put, put it this way. Uh, all the three people who did the most damage in the game are the three carries from Columbia College. Even Zeno right. and the Caitlyn from Korean Danny didn't do more damage than the Ezreal, which was the lowest of the three. So they're still out damaging pretty much pound for pound across the board here on the side of Columbia College. And they're, and they're able to get away here with, I always say get away, but the Ezreal for Evan RL, right? Yeah, you can absolutely go ban an Ezreal, but he's, like, I have other AD carries that you yeah. can play that actually are better than Ezreal right now, so it's not that big of a deal. So they're getting these great wins. With champions, you really can't focus the ban either and hope to kind of put them down a few. And it's going kind of all over the place because even Dean on the Alistar, fantastic performance right. there. Had a lot of that setup that caught Korean Danny before, and then Julian's Roams. It's pretty much everybody from Columbia College is playing incredibly well, but they're also playing well as a team. Well, we'll see how they do. Continuing on here, Columbia College are at match point, and to hear how they got a 2 0 lead, let's send it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, and let's talk about this one. A 2 0 start. Our prediction is almost correct. The Drake one, obviously not so much. Seven and a half now no longer possible. I was pretty sure that was going to go wrong after game. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the fact that I got something on yeah. my debut here, I'll tell I you. You are the first winner today. You are the first winner today. Congratulations <laughs> over seven and a half Drakes. But let's talk about this one. It's another one where uh, we think team comps still seem to go the way of Columbia College. Specifically in the mid lane, it's funny. Uh, you were already talking about it, but I want to bring up a story uh, as I was walking to the smoothie bar, there's a couple of LCS teams here for Asset Day or something, and they were like, wow, letting Zatsmod get Cassiopeia again, that's funny. Zatsmod yeah. being Julian's uh, older screen name. So, like, even the LCS players are aware you don't give him Cassiopeia. The mistake, of course, that Illinois is making. Yeah, I mean, this guy was rank one. You can, you, if you do your readings, which, you know, we expect in a college setting, uh, you probably want to look up this guy and notice that he plays a lot of Cassio and a lot of Oriana. Uh, they banned the Ori, but interestingly enough, uh, they could actually take the Ori away second phase, and he can opt into the Cassio or maybe opt into a matchup that is maybe a little worse, right? We know Misty Stumpy is going to play that Yasuo in mm -hmm. the top lane. You know, they're doing it before. They've kind of showed their hand in the quarterfinal previously. So just making sure that you actually get that appropriate mid matchup against someone as skilled as Julian with a champion that he's way too familiar with to give him that comfort. It's especially like a problem because if you were banning the Ori and then you're gonna take something that has a good matchup in the Cassio and forcing him off that way, that'd be fine. But they played Vladimir, which is that not bad. good into Cassio. <laughs> they do that blind into a Cassio player after banning out the other champion you yeah. might want to play. So you're really just setting yourself up for a tough time in the mid lane. Yeah. And maybe that wouldn't be such a big deal if they were able to say like, well, whatever, maybe you're comfortable in this matchup, you're down going down. You're down losing a little bit, that's okay. If they're making plays elsewhere on the map, but they've had a really hard time executing and getting advantages against Columbia in these other lanes. Yeah, and of course, you talk about the other lanes here. The first thing we saw was a lot of pressure in that top side. Orn versus Yasuo. You have some CC there. The Skarner can do it too. And they tried several times, it's never quite worked out. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you, you have a split pushing Yasuo, you want to go up there, you want to shut him down early so that if the Vlad does not lose lane that badly, he'll be fine matching up against him. But all this pressure that they put up to the top side never really results in much. There's just not a great coordination between 
uh, the jungler in the top lane here, top Apotamus. Z's already down, no way to get him after the flash stun. So while they're are putting pressure on Stumpy. Stumpy's doing a great job surviving all of it. Yeah, and then uh, this unfortunate recall timing in order to actually, yeah. after the regank, actually gets first blood for the Yasuo, even after all this pressure. I think that's really bad too, because you have this mid lane that does need a little bit of help, like we said before, that matchup's not the greatest, and bot lane may need a little bit of help, or just the fact that the jungler's in Fog of War is really important, but you committed the act of the jungler being out of Fog of War, committed to top lane for so long, and then all that gets you is first blood before the Yasuo, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's not the greatest of situations. I think they put Illinois in a real deficit, especially when you think about scaling. Uh, Columbia College has double tier, mm -hmm. so mid, double tier Ezreal, triple tier, because Casio also builds it, and that can uh, create a huge scaling advantage overall for uh, the side of Columbia College. Yeah, it feels like so far they're just sort of playing as the better team overall. Even the things that might have made sense, like those ganks, like it's just not coming through, so you're not getting the matchups. Yeah. And of course, we're seeing more of these battles coming in here. Uh, big team fights across the 14 and 18 minute mark, and it was just advantages constantly picked up. This one, a three for zero, partially under the turret. Yeah, a lot of surviving being done on the top side for Columbia, but when they finally get their chance to pull the trigger themselves down the bot side, they, they do a great job finding this, and Julian, roaming around the map, gets the double kill for himself, and I thought he was going to be in trouble since he tends decides to turn around and kite into them and actually, after getting pulled in, stay in this fight, but uh, he's able to just barely stay alive. The Alistair wraps back around, keeps him alive. And this is uh, not quite the nail in the coffin, but puts uh, Illinois really far behind and things continue to get worse. They start grabbing the dragons for themselves on Columbia's side, end up with double Infernal and then uh, just these lost fights where they're not quite able to find the right angles. Yeah, it's really rough to play Ornn in this game too. Ornn into Yasuo, you know, your ulti can get windwalled and then stuff like this can happen where Cassio ult can completely stop you from yeah. headbutting your ram friend. Yeah, the W and R both, right, can prevent you from hitting that button. That's been pretty rough. There was yeah. one or two he might have missed as well, but uh, yeah, either way, pretty pretty rough stuff here as the, the final kills came through. Is Yeah, again, it's just like Columbia College feel like the better team overall and you're just seeing pieces of it throughout the entire game. And, and you know, we were looking for them to be more aggressive. Earlier in the day, Inver was talking about how like, okay, uh, Illinois needs to find some ways to pull the trigger. And they did actually swap kind of their jungle support from the last game. Yeah. This time, they're the ones who have the Scar and Rakan, but they're just not quite as clean with the plays that they're going for. So yeah. a couple times around yeah. mid, they'd find like one kill under a turret, but you need to be transitioning that into actual objectives, and they just couldn't do that. Yeah, there's a, there were a lot of good looks for the Rakan, especially in that, you know, last fight where Julian barely survived uh, you know, he could have flash ultied in order to get the Yasuo and avoid the wind wall stopping or an ulti. Uh, right here, you're hoping it. he jumps in. Jump. Eat the Caitlyn, flash our W. So much time, but uh, you know, that kind of pulls them away from the fight. And when we do get that Recon ulti, it's a bit too late and Julian barely survives and gets to get back into the fight regardless. So, and then late Yasuo ulti, once Yasuo ulti oh, kind of yeah. comes in and just takes out one of your members and he gets that sh shield back, uh, it's really difficult to, to fight on those turns. So, especially with the comp that Illinois had. Yeah, and so you're seeing from that graph right there, after about 14 minutes, it's just the downhill, just run of yeah. gold right there. The landing bases are competitive. They are reasonably close. They're obviously within striking distance. You can see even the max gold lead about 1.3K at the top of that graph, but just not enough to be done about it. The overall team region clearly much better. The shot calling everything else. We still have very, very few turrets killed. One in this game, one or zero in the previous. The macro's not there. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, you're okay if you're side of Columbia College going with this comp, you know, down 1.3 at 10 minutes. That's not the end of the world, yeah. especially with how the gold loop was uh, situated. And then to end up, you know, once those plays start coming in your favor, Columbia just runs away with the game. And so it feels like Illinois need to get some kind of set of champions that allows them to not only find a kill easy, but also have priority in their lanes. Yeah, I would also say uh, it's not just enough for them to find that set of champions, but let's take away some of the sets of champions <laughs> yeah, that yeah. actually work for Columbia so far, right? That Cassio has been played two times in a row. We know it's comfort. Everyone by now should know it's comfort. It kind of took two games to figure that out. We'll see. But... You don't know if they figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I want to see them really poke holes in Julian's champion pool, yeah. challenge him and say, you know, we're taking you off this. What else do you got? And then for the top lane, if you know that split push is happening, try and find not only a top side matchup that can hold it, but that can influence the map while that split pusher is still trying to scale. Yeah, I think game one, you saw Stumpy, while still having a good game, was not nearly as effective and 
having such an influence over the sure. whole game as he does when he gets the Yasuos, the Camilles, Fioros, whatever yeah. you want to pick in the top side. Yeah, of course, game three coming up very, very soon. Red team picked by Columbia College and a jungle sub coming in for University of Illinois. Of course, we're only one game away from Columbia's college shot at the finals, and we'll see if Illinois can extend the series after the break. Don't touch that browser. Julian about to get the scream out. Twin Fangs and Noob. Flash forward. Oh, gets him with the petrified gaze. The initiation is a lot better for University of Illinois. They make it happen on their own terms and they do find a target. Buck Zach goes down first. Do they get stumpy? There's the cleanse coming out from the Quicksilver Sash. Watch what? I got, I got knock up, knock up, yeah. knock up. Nice. All right. Pillar, pillar. Vlad, 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 Vlad. Take it, Vlad. Nice. Ooh, let's go, go boys. Mid. Will he be able to throw down the ultimate for enough damage? Whoa. Amplification, last press to the back line. Double kill coming in. Triple, Triple for Stumpy. Looking for the Quadra. That one's going over to Julian. And Columbia College look to take University of Illinois to game point in this semifinal matchup.